So you just received your new Promethean boards. Let's talk about that. I'm going to cover the Promethean board in two parts, and it will not be an exhaustive list of things that the Promethean board can do, but hopefully it helps you get started at least. First off, I'm going to point out some of the different features on the outside of the board so that you understand what the, what the different buttons do. You'll notice at the very bottom here in the center, you have kind of a home row of sorts. Starting on the far left, you do have your power button. Uh, then next you have your volume down, volume up, your home button, which is the Promethean flame. Next to that is the freeze button, which many of you are used to with your projectors that whatever is on the board, you can freeze and then it just stays on the board and you can continue doing other various things on your laptop without it being seen on the screen. And then the far right one is your touch on or touch off. So there are some times that you may not want to accidentally touch something on the screen. You can press this button and there will be an icon that shows up that demonstrates that the no touch is on. And then finally, there's the input selection button. In this case here, it will show you a home screen, but if you did have some other devices connected, when you press the source button, other options will show up. So for instance, if we did have this connected to a laptop, you would have the USB-C option as your video connection. Furthermore, there are some options on the back side of the board. So let's take a look at those. On the back side of the board, starting from the top on the way down, you have some USB inputs, you have some video out, but we're, what we're most concerned about here are the other options. For most of you, you will be using the USB-C plus touch. One cord will activate everything, both sound, video, as well as touch. Then as we move down, you also have two more HDMI inputs, as well as USB inputs for touch capabilities. And you have some old school VGA input. And at the very bottom, you have a few other inputs that you can utilize, but uh, most likely you'll never use them. All right, that pretty much covers all of the buttons and little features on the outside. So let's dig into what's actually in the board itself. So many of you have been used to, especially with a projector system, you've been used to connecting your laptop up and really this intelligent board is not that intelligent. It's the computer that makes it intelligent. Well, that has changed with this model as well as some previous models of panels. These actually connect to the internet. So these end up being just big gigantic tablets. Don't think of an iPad if you have an iPad. It's going to be more of your Galaxy Tab or some of the other generic off-brands of uh, Android tablets. But it is still very powerful. So we're gonna take a look at the different options you have on this particular board. Over on the left-hand side, bottom and to the right, there are little arrows. Those arrows are going to all do the exact same thing and that's going to give you kind of a home row of features, whether you're at the bottom, the left, or all the way to the right. So these features, the locker is going to give you all of your apps that you currently have installed. This is the screen that's here. You can easily swipe to go to, <laughs> easily swipe to go to your other apps. This is also how you connect to your settings with this little gear tab. These are the simple settings right here where you can change volume, the brightness of the screen, the contrast. And if you wanna use palm mode, which I'll show later, which I am going to turn on, palm mode allows you to take your hand and do the erasing. There's also an option for more settings which goes much deeper into what the system can do. So we'll go back to the apps a little bit later. So you can go back home by pressing the home button right here or by clicking the arrow up. We're going to skip owner for now. 
Home is just that, it's home. It'll close out all apps that you have open and take you back to this blank screen right here. Next to that is your whiteboard. The whiteboard is very simple for those of you that have had a panel. Uh, you already know how this whiteboard generally works. For those of you that had just a Prometheum board with a projector, uh, you did not have this feature unless you had the computer connected and you had opened uh, Active Inspire software. So it's very simple to be able to write on this board. You can use the supplied pen or your finger for that matter. You choose your colors on the left hand side or you can click the three buttons above and change the toolbar position all the way to the right side if you prefer to have it on the right side. So here you have your pen tool. You can immediately start writing. It does do multi-digit touch, so you can have all four fingers and create grids in that fashion. As I mentioned earlier, there is the erase function with your hand, so you can hit erase. And it'll remove it all. We also have some other fun features in here such as this little hashtag button. For those of you that might teach math or uh, writing skills, you do have the options of putting grids up on the board. Also for writing, where it will give you your solid lines and your dashed lines. And you can change the color of the background. And you can change the colors of the lines. So if you were to have your math options up here, you can feel free to play around with all of those options. Furthermore, before we depart this screen here, we do have some options in the image section. Here you can have your own gallery of images, but you can also use some charts and templates that have already been provided by Prometheum. You'll notice that if you happen to be teaching chemistry, you can bring up a periodic table that's already been preloaded. There's also other charts and graphs that you can work off of. There are some math tools that you'll see at the very bottom section down here. Uh, they take a little bit to get used to. You can drag and hold. You wanna make sure that wherever you put your finger, you make sure it's right on that edge and it'll put a blue dotted line around. And you can drag your finger across and it will stay right on that line. Then you can move that And you can create angles. That way you get nice straight lines. And then to remove any of the tools, you just hit the X in the, in the center. Another fun tool that you have access to, you'll see two people and a line in between. When you press that button, you'll see a diagonal straight through the board. And along with that, you have two options of menus. Now two students or a student and a teacher can come forward and they can both work on this independently. So you could have someone that might be writing in red and someone over here writing in blue. And so this divides them up. And that way when they do a clear all, it does not clear what's on the other side. So one way that you can utilize this is that you might have a math problem on one side, but you don't want that messed with, and you want someone to show their work on the other side. A few other options that you have for yourself. If you happen to draw something and you wanna move it, it's, it's in the way. So you're, you're creating maybe a, a concept map and it's just getting larger and larger and it's just in the way. You can take the pointer tool, you can grab the item and move it around 
to wherever you would like it. And as you saw there, I single tapped on the group and I can delete just that group. The other great thing about this particular board is that you are you have almost an infinite space to work in. So as you are writing and drawing on the board and you're starting to use up a lot of space, you just have to long hold on the board with the pointer tool. If you look in the top right hand side of the board, you'll notice two red lines. That represents the visible portion of the board. As you move down, you can see that that changes, which is essentially giving you more workspace that you can draw, write in, whatever it might be, and you can kind of scroll through what you've done already if someone needs to refer back to what had already been done in class. So let's go back to the locker. Let's go to Chrome to a web browser. Now it defaults to this smaller looking window. In order to enlarge that window in the bottom right, you'll see two arrows going diagonal from each other. That'll enlarge the screen. Once you've brought up a website or uh, an image that you have found somewhere or a document or it, it doesn't matter, whatever you bring up on this screen, now we're going to take a look at instead of the whiteboard, we have the ability to annotate. So down in the bottom here, you have the option of annotate. Very similar to the whiteboard, not as much functionality, but you do have the ability to mark up whatever's on the screen. So in this case, we have the pen tool selected and we have red. Another great thing about these boards, they have the ability to split apps. What you're going to look for is in the bottom right hand corner, large rectangle and a small rectangle. What we're going to do here is press the one that has the large rectangle on the left, which will move our website over to the left hand side. Now we're going to open up our whiteboard. We're going to move this to the right hand side. Now you have a web page over here that you can scroll through showing off information. And over on the right hand side, you have the ability to add any kind of annotations you would like uh, for the class to see as notes or whatever you utilize in your particular classroom. If you are showing off some particular software, uh, if you're using Alex or Reading Plus, you could show information on this side and demonstrate uh, some of the skills on the, the right hand side. Now let's go back to our locker and take a look at a few more apps. You have many of the same items that are on your lower bar. We have screen share, which allows you to share a code with your students and they can be put into a waiting room where they can share their screen with the board. You can have up to four squares on the board at any given time and up to 30 or so students in a waiting room able to show their, their work later. So if you want to be able to show students work, this is one great way of doing that. Timer is exactly what it says it is, and you can have multiple timers. Spinner, uh, which some of you have already utilized in your classrooms. We'll take a look at timer first. So just like any other timer, this one's already preset to 10 minutes. It counts down and then plays a sound. You can change your settings. If you want to force students to understand analog, uh, go for it. And this will help them out potentially with that skill. And you can add another timer by hitting the plus button. Gives you another timer. As you see here, you can also choose just to have a clock up timer or a stopwatch. So you can have a countdown or a count up if you so desire. 
or full screen. Spinner as an app is a way that you can encourage some studying or some uh, shout outs of answers. It already comes preloaded with a series of different items. You can edit these particular spinners to be anything that you'd like them to be, whatever terms that you would like as it spins uh, for creating definitions where you have the, the name and the student has to respond back with a definition. This is another way in which you can call on students where you can just spin this and have one through 30 and whatever number that falls on, that's, that's that student that is going to be called on. Many of the other apps that you see in here, you probably won't use. Now, there are other ones that you can download and that you can investigate on your own. Do you want to bring your attention to the settings that are, if there are some settings that need to be changed, don't hesitate to take a look at those. And these other ones here, you most likely will not use Play Stores where you can go to find other apps for this board. You will have to sign in with your Google credentials to be able to access that database. All right, so that's it for now. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, or if you discovered something that you found very interesting, uh, feel free to comment. This will be embedded on a YouTube page, so you can comment on the YouTube page itself. Uh, there will also be links in the description that you can click on to go to a just a sheet that you can add further information or even questions for that matter uh, that maybe other people could answer or someone from technology or myself could, could possibly uh, help you out with. So have fun with the new boards. You almost can't break them. Uh, if you think that you've messed something up on the inside of these things, we can wipe them out and start them all fresh and new again. So don't be afraid to just kind of play, press some buttons, uh, go into some of these different areas and see what they do and uh, have fun.